Welcome back to the session. Usually in business world, there are two types of messages you have to write. One is good news, another is bad news. Good news means positive news. And we have already covered the discussion on positiveness, writing positively. There was a separate chapter. And we have learned something writing positively. Also, today we will learn more about writing direct messages or direct messages, same thing. So there are two types of messages. One is direct and another is indirect. And these direct and indirect messages are linked to good news messages and bad news the messages. When you will write good news, good news you will write in direct language and when you will write bad news we will use the indirect approach what is direct approach direct approach as i have given the examples in your uh, effect of positive writing lecture that if you achieve a grade then I can easily sir, write. Can you repeat, please, sir? Sorry. Uh, sorry, Kibulsan. Can Can you hear me? All right. The sound is working. Yes, sir. Okay. So was talking. Repeating. Okay, that, that means that uh, there are two types of messages usually are written in the business world. One is positive message, another is negative message. Positive message, say for example, you have been promoted. You are the two colleagues working as an assistant manager and your friend has been promoted to manager and you have not. So it is, is it, it is a bad news to you, D really. How this, uh, how this bad news, the top management will let you know. The approach they will use to address this bad news is known as indirect approach, indirect, not the direct approach. And the guy who has been promoted to the higher position assistant manager, the message that will be written to the promotee will be the direct message or good news message here, good news message. So good news, one of the employees have promoted to manager from the assistant manager, it is a good news. So when the human resource department will let the information know to the Promoting the approach that the HR manager, HR department will use is known as a direct approach, direct message. Direct message means that the letter will begin with the good news. This is direct message. And indirect message means that the letter will not begin with the bad news. Rather, the writer, the HR department will use a strategic buffer. Strategic buffer means that they will write something related with promotion, write something to satisfy the reader, but will not write the message for which the letter is being retained. Separate example, when you have been promoted to manager the hr department will write that you are one of the great employees in our company and the management has decided you to promote to your to the next position 
So congratulations for being the manager of the marketing or production or accounting department. So this is direct message. You are writing the message directly to the employee. Direct message. And bad news, you have not been promoted to the next level, next level. So how the message will be conveyed by the HR department to you? The HR department will follow indirect approach. In the indirect next chapter, indirect approach. In the indirect approach, the message will begin with a strategic buffer. Strategic buffer, say for example, here the message will begin, say for an example, as you have not been promoted. So first, he will tell, or the HR department will write that you are very good, or you are one of the best employees in our company. Your contribution is unforgettable. The contributions you had made, the achievements, achievements you help to, the, the, the way the, you help to achieve the objectives of our company was outstanding. This is the buffer, strategic buffer. The writer says this is known as the strategic buffer. In the second paragraph, you will give the bad news. Unfortunately, we have only one position where one of you will be promoted. This time we have given the chance to another employee, but next time we hope that you will be the best. That means you have explaining that you have not promoted. promoted. So it is not important right directly that you have been you have not been promoted, but the message will give the insight that you have not been promoted. So after giving some strategic buffer, then you are writing the message in indirect language, also in indirect language. You are not uh, positively or writing positively that maybe this time. Um, this time we fail to do that, but next time we hope that you, you, you will be promoted, promoted. So dealing with good news and dealing with bad news. When you are dealing with good news, you will use the direct approach. Direct approach means that you will write the good news in the beginning of the letter. That is known as direct message. And bad news, indirect approach means that you will not write the bad news in the beginning of the message. You will begin with a buffer and then you will move to the bad news. And when you will write the bad news, you will not use the negative word. You must be positive writing the negative message. So we are, we are going to discuss today about the direct approach or writing direct messages for good news. <clears throat> direct order, when to use direct order message start with the most important point. That means you have achieved a grade. So when I will write, when I will write to you for your achievement, then I will come, I will write that congratulations you have achieved a great. So the direct order message start with the most important point and then moves into the additional supporting point. Then I will I can write that your performance in the presentation was excellent. Your performance in the written test was good. The MCK we have answered it was 100% correct. The assignment you have submitted was outstanding. So supporting message I am writing. So direct order message start with the most important point and then I'm explaining the issues. Determine the reader's probable reaction, positive, neutral, or negative. So read, what will be the reader reaction, positive, neutral, or negative? It is also important when you will hear that 
uh, you, you know, you have you you have uh, got uh, a grade for a course. Your reaction will be positive, is it? So when I am writing the um, uh, letter, I have to determine it. And if it is positive or neutral, use director. If it is neg negative, then use an indirect uh, order. That means for if you achieve C grade. C grade, your approach will be negative, your reaction will be negative. I will use indirect order. Indirect order. I will be, I will begin with your performance in the written exam. Your MCQ exam was very good. Your performance in the other section were good, but the report you have written was very poor. Poor. So we'll use the, we'll identify the positiveness of the re reader or neutralness of the reader or negativeness of the reader. And then you will start writing. And direct order means for positive or neutral writing. Sometimes if it is neutral, if, the, if we can understand that your reaction will be neutral, then we, also, we can also use direct approach or direct order. But if it is negative, we must use the indirect approach. It is the lessons from the business world. In the business world, you can write directly if it is positive or neutral. And if it is negative, you have to use the indirect approach. approach. And the basic format for a direct approach or direct order includes begin with your objective. That means my objective is to let you know your achievement. My objective is to let you know the matter of promotion. You have been promoted. So begin with your objective. So in case of positive, positive letter, direct letter, for positive news, you will begin with the objective. State it immediately in the first sentence or after a brief summary of background information. You can write that. Congratulations, you have get, get uh, a plus or a. Or you, you can you can summarize. Uh, you can give some background information. Say for example, there are twenty students in the classroom. Out of the twenty students, only you, the guy, has achieved a grade. So you can you can give some background information. Background inform ultimately, but you will write the objective of your letter in the beginning of the letter cover the uh, remaining part of the objective if there is more than one question uh, information you are asking use points or paragraphs for e each one so if, if there are other points then you can uh, use bulleted points or you can also use paragraphs for each question or its issue and end with goodwill and conclude on a friendly note. Might uh, want to avoid some uh, some of the rubber stamps in your writing. Get a personalized note. So try to avoid the rubber stamps. Rather, you will you will write personally. That means when you are writing to writing um, to many people, the closing will be different for different people. Different people. So be careful of rubber stumps and then the different types of direct messages usually in the business world are used routine inquiries favorable responses adjustment grounds order acknowledgements operational communications routine inquiries routine inquiries means that you want to know something about a product say for an example you are a buyer and you want to buy a computer, MacBook, you are writing to a party or to the supplier about the computer. So it is also, you will use the direct order for routine inquiries. So what is the, uh, you know, version available right this moment of MacBook? What is the processor? What is the, you know, capacity? Uh, who is version of you know 
Windows or some other, um, uh, you know, Mac operating system are using. So this type of routine inquiries, for inquiring anything, you can use direct order. That means you'll write the objective of the letter first. And then favorable responses. Favorable responses, say for example, after getting the inquiries from you, the supplier, if if the MacBook, the MacBook Pro is available there or MacBook is available there, then they will reply positively, yes. Thank you for writing the message. The product you are looking for is available to us. So for favorable reply, you will use the direct order. Direct order means you will begin with the objective of, of your letter. Adjustment grants. Adjustment grants means maybe the laptop you have bought. That means you, you, you inquired for a laptop. The responses you have got good. And now we have got the MacBook, but the MacBook is uh, defective, defective. So you are writing to the supplier that the product is not good. In that case, the supplier will make the adjustment. This is known as adjustment grants. When your objections are acceptable to the supplier, the supplier will replace your product. It is known as adjustment grants. In case of your um, adjustment grants, you can use direct order. You can write that, yes, the complaint you have made is true. And the our investigation shows that the problem is from our side. So we are replacing the laptop, computer. It is known as adjustment grants. When your complaints are accepted to the supplier, it is known as adjustment grants. In case of uh, adjustment grants, you can use the direct order. Order acknowledgments. Yes. Order acknowledgment means that after receiving the product, you will acknowledge that, yes, we have received your product. In that case, you can also use the direct message. That means the product you have sent to us through email or through mail or through express mail. We have received the product, the product details you will give there. That means you can begin with the direct order, with the objective. That means you can carry the main objective of your letter in the beginning of the message or letter. Operational communication, you can also use uh, direct orders in operational messages. Here, um, uh, we must refer that there are three types of business communications. One is internal operational, another is external operational, and another is personal communication. This operational uh, communication means internal operational communication. These are also operationals. This is internal operational communications here. Maybe <clears throat> you are circulating that 10% salary is increasing, increasing. So when they, the news is positive, you can use the direct approach. That um, good news and greetings from the company that your salary has revised and you will get a 10% increase or increments in the coming month or months. So the in case of operational communications, internal operational communications for positive news is you can use the direct approach and for negative news is you have to use indirect approach I'm coming with. So these are the, these are the business scenarios. These are the business scenarios where you can use the direct approach and direct approach means that you are writing the main news to the reader in the first paragraph or first sentence of the message or letter. Routine inquiries, favorable responses, ad adjustment grants, acknowledgements and internal operational communications, you can use direct order. Routine inquiries. Routine inquiries, as we have discussed, routine inquiries are direct requests for information. Following up on an 
advertisement, checking, meeting, availability with a the client. These are all the inquiries, inquiries uh, for an advertisement, for uh, following up, following up an advertisement, checking, meeting, availability with a client. Focus directly on the objective. Choose from two types of beginnings, general or specific. General means that you can give some background and then you can explain your objective. That is general. And specific means you directly write the objectives of your letter. Why you are writing. You will specify it here in the beginning sentence. Include necessary explanation if required. If required, then you will give some necessary explanations. If there is more than one inquiry, use bullet points or numbers or paragraphs for each one. End with a guru will adapt words to individual cases. That means th thank you, thank you, or such type of rubber stamps. You can you can avoid, you can use different types of supplies messages for guru will building. Guruil building. Guruil means uh, um, Guruil. What is Guruil? We have already covered a chapter on Guruil building. How to build Guruils? Sir, UV point a Guruil. Yeah, One of them. One of them is UV point. Concern for what? other. Becoming more courteous. Courtesy is showing courtesy. Is building Guruil. So there are there are a lot of options we have already gone through. So here here um, there is an example of routine inquiry. The examples includes here you can check that uh, it begins with the salutation, dear Mister Piper. We have seen your advertisement for 3,200 square feet of office space in the daily journal. As we are interested, we would like additional information, especially, specifically we need to, we would like to know the interior layout in all costs, availability of transportation, length of lease agreement, educational escalation provisions, and any other information you Think pertinent. If the information you give us is favorable, we will inspect the property. Please send your reply. So this letter's indirect and vague beginning makes it slow. So in routine inquiry, you will begin with the objective of your message. That means you 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 can you do not give the introduction of the letter. Rather, you will specifically state that you'll just refer refer to your daily journal advertisement and then you will start writing we would like to know the interior layout and what type of interior layout you also make it sure so the revised version of this type of letter is given here you can write routine inquiry with specific information Will you please answer the following questions about 3,200 square feet office suit advertised in June 28 issue of Daily Journal? It appears that it appears that this space may be suitable for a new regional headquarters. So you are also explaining that you are going to open a regional headquarters. We are opening in our city in August. So now you are specifying your queries in different bulleted points. Is the layout of this office suitable for a workforce of two administrators, a receptionist, and seven office employees? If possible, please um, send us a diagram of this space. So rather than writing only the interior layout, you are specifying here that interior layout, you need an interior layout for two administrators, receptionist, and seven office employees. So the, you know, um, the person who will answer the quiz uh, will have the idea about your requirements. What is the annual rental charge? You're also specifying about the rental charge specifically. Are housekeeping, maintenance, utilities are included? What is the nature of walls and flooring? Uh, does the location provide easy access to mass transportation and the airport? 
What are your requirements for length of risk agreement? Uh, what escalation provisions are included in the risk? Escalation means that if there are any options to change the points or uh, cancel the lease, etc. Escalation provisions are included in the lease agreement. If your answers meet our needs, we would like to run the tour of the offices as soon as possible. So this letter is much, much organized and in direct approach. So rather than writing routine inquiries indirectly, we will write directly and with details. details. This is um, the system of writing routine inquiries. And there are, here there are some more points is specified. So for an example here, you are making a reference point, questions on management courses. Uh, here, here, here it is the direct approach. Why it is direct? A general request uh, sets up the specific question. Please send us the additional information we need in determining whether to enroll or some of our executives in your online management courses. We have the general information about the schedule posted on, the, on your website, especially we need answers to the following questions. Uh, reference, here, is, here you, you have given the reference. Reference to website tells uh, what writer knows, helps reader in responding. So here you say that some information are available in your website. So the information those are available in the website will not be included in the answer to the queries. queries. So the, it is the reference point for the writer. What are your quantity discount rates? That means the information that is given there in the website, the information about the quantity discounts is not available. So you are asking that question. We could enroll about six executives for this course. At what background level is our program geared? So what type of background uh, it is important to enroll in the program? We have engineers, accountants, scientists, business ex executives. Most have college degrees, some not. So uh, you, you are also explaining that um, uh, what is the background of your people, people. So what arrangements need to be made for them to receive college credit for the course? That means you also need a certificate with transcript credit. Credit means your, uh, say for an example, after finishing this, this uh, course, if you are successful, then you will be, you will earn through credit. Credit. So, if without credit, it means that uh, th there is no value for any degree award. Some of our executives are working on degrees and one credit. So, if if you have, if the course carries any credit, this will lead to achieve a degree. Without credit, you will not get any degree. What are the names and email addresses of training directors of companies that have enrolled their executives in your management courses? That means you are also trying to receive some previous uh, history of the organization so that you can discuss with the training directors, those who have taken the uh, training course. So number questions stand out uh, helps reader in responding. So if you number the queries, it will help the reader or the respondents to resp respond properly. properly. Explanations worked into uh, questions where needed. So you're also giving some explanations uh, along with the questions. This is also very good points for inquiries. You are you're adding, you are asking questions and you are also giving some explanations. Say for example, what is your point discounts? We, we could enroll about six executives per score. So the trainer or the, um, you know, the respondent can understand that six executives means that you are going to get few people. So whether you can allow any discounts or not. Not. So some explanations will help you them to decide an answer properly.
properly. We will appreciate having your answers uh, for our quarter three, October three stop meeting. So you're also giving a deadline here in a different way. October three stop meeting, we look forward to the possibility of sending our executives to. So you are not writing uh, in a rubber stamp way. You are, you are, you are closing the letter uh, in a goodwill note. Goodwill note, that means we would look, we look forward to the possibility of sending our executives to you. You are appreciating. You're appreciating the organization to answer by October 3. So favorable uh, fraud look uh, makes goodwill close. This is the way of writing a inquiry letter. Inquiry letter. So when you will, in your professional life, in your um, you know job life, in your personal life, this type of letter usually you need to type or write. So you must be careful of writing this. Remember these points. You will you will specify everything, and you will give explanations. You will begin with the complimentary note, and then you will begin directly for positive news, or you will apply direct approach. This is the letter written in direct approach, <laughs> and then. Favorable responses. This is also another type of, um, you know, case where you can you apply direct approach. Favorable responses for favorable responses, you can use direct approach or direct order. Favorable responses are positive answer to inquiries, telling readers what they need to know. Example, Responding to a customer request for information, identify the message being answered in the beginning or subject line. Uh, that means you, you will give a reference. You'll answer, you know, responses to your queries dated um, 6 January 2024, etc., etc. Identify the message being answered. Begin with answer to state or state you, you are complying with the request. That means then you will start answering. Logically answer the questions. If there is only one question, just answer that. If more than one, then uh, arrange them according to the inquiry. If there are five questions, write answer five questions. If there are six questions, answer six questions. You can use different paragraphs to indicate answer to one question. So for favorable responses, you will write positively in direct order, direct order. <coughs> but if it is unfavorable response, which form you are going to use for unfavorable response? Dear floor. The indirect way. Indirect. Indirect? Yes, sir. Is it, Mr. Thaimon? Mr. Thaimon, are you here? Maybe he's yes, sleeping. sir. Oh, really? So can you please tell me when you will use a direct approach and when you will use indirect approach in the business world? Sir, when I know that the response will be neutral, I use the direct method. And, and when I have good news or bad news, I use the indirect method. So for good news, you will use indirect virus or thing. Sir, for good news, we will uh, use the direct method. And for the bad news, we will uh, use indirect method so that it doesn't hurt anyone. So, um, uh, Mr. Thaimon, you were wrong. For good news, you will use because our, our our lecture begins with that. The, the chapter title is Sir, I have a question. The title of direct message. And direct message for good news. The Sir, chapter I is ultimately for good news. All right. So neutral, you can use the direct approach for neutral position or neutral news. That is true. That is true. In th that point is good. Neutral. You can use the neutral approach 
direct approach for neutral situation, but for negative or for unfavorable responses that we are going to discuss unfavorable unfavorable responses you use indirect approach and favorable responses direct approach we are ultimately going through the direct approach chapter in favorable responses skillfully handle the negatives handle the bad news with care de-emphasize it do not put in the beginning of the message or at the end choose your words carefully so if there is any negatives then maybe you are writing a favorable response you are asking your you your uh, inquiry was um, for a macbook pro and you you, you want the 2023 20, edition but the the if the supplier do not have the 2023 20, edition but the latest version maybe 20 uh, two version is available. In that case, it is also favorable response. Favorable response, but skillfully, uh, you need to say that 23, all the features you have retained available with the 2022 version, but only 2024 is not available. So in that case, you can de-emphasize it. And you should not put in very beginning of the message or at the end of the message. Somehow, in between the beginning and end, somewhere you'll say that although all features are available, all the features, all the inquiries, all the, um, you know, all the features you demanded is available with 2023 version, but 2022 version, 2023 is not available. Uh, so in that case, you will give it in the middle of the message, not at the beginning or at the end. And if it is totally negative, that you don't have any Mac, then you will, it is unfavorable response and you will begin with, or you will use the indirect approach. Consider including extras, any additional information that might be valuable, any suggestions. So when you're writing a favorable response, you can also give some additional information that is not given there in the inquiry, but those may be important to the reader. So you can give some additional information and every time you will end with a guru message. And this must be created for individual reader that means uh, uh, catered individuality that different from the rubber stamp that is known as catered individually here there is a <clears throat> response response uh, professor Hesten at us is a file containing the production records production records you asked for in your made to message. That means you are making a reference. For, for responses, you are making a reference of inquiry letter, made to message. We think you will find them useful in your project. So here, direct approach reports a favorable response, uh, shows friendly attitude. That means we think this will find them useful in your project. It is friendly. Editor, as you will understand, much of the information concerns company secrets our competitors should not know. Therefore, the file is password protect, password post protected and set to expire 10 days. Additionally, we request anonymity in any published use of the data. So you are also explaining, yes, you can use the data, but you have to be careful, be cautious. It skillfully handles negative point in positive language. So it is ultimately negative points you are explaining in positive. So in, in other way, you could write that, please be careful. Please do not, do not supply the data to any third party, et cetera, et cetera. So you are avoiding the negatives. Then Guru will adapt it to one cause. 
uh, the work you are doing will be available to all of us in the industry. We wish you the best of luck in your work and look forward to reaching, reading your results. So that means this is a goodwill message for the professor, the production manager. Especially this type of replies are coming from the factories. We usually demand some information from the factories to do some research job. They also provide with confidence. This type of secret or confidential passwords are given by them so that only I can read. And we also maintain the integrity. Integrity, we never disclose the information to the general people. We only disclose the results of the information and we never disclose the name of the company. So this is also one of the principles of research that I was also talking in our previous lecture. Research, doing a research, there is some confidentiality. You cannot, you cannot, you know, name the company when the information is sensitive. Sensitive. For sensitive information, you cannot uh, express the names, favorable responses, and adjustment grounds. What is adjustment grounds? Maybe your complaint is accept, accepted and the company is compensating your loss in that case this is known as adjustment grants that means your 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 complaint has been accepted by them for grants adjustment grants are when a company acknowledges their error and corrects it for it by giving the customer an adjustment begin with the good news directly the, for adjustment grants you are also going to use direct approach or direct order Overcome negative impressions with positives. So the product, maybe, you, you, that, that I was also talking, the laptop or the MacBook you have received is defective and you are asking for compensation for the laptop. So as the product is defective, so it is not positive, this is negative. So you are overcoming negative impressions with positives. So begin with the good news and that will ultimately overcome the negative impressions. Incidentally, uh, incidentally identify the message you are answering. Now you are you will write the message. Yes, your your complaint is true. Complaint is true. We are compensating, but we cannot compensate hundred percent. Uh, you have to give 20% more money and we will replace the product. Say for an example, identify the message you are answering. Uh, do not bring up the situation being corrected repeatedly. And the problem, the problem for which you are being corrected, you will not write it repeatedly. So, so be careful. When you are writing a letter, you will not repeat the negative news in the letter. Only once you will write the negative point. So do not bring up the situation being repeat, uh, corrected repeatedly. Uh, regain lost confidence. So you are losing the confidence when you have got the defective product. The supplier's confidence is destroyed so regain lost confidence give an explanation or talk about the corrective actions that would be taken or the precautionary measures will be taken and with friendly and positive words this is uh, every time you have to use and do not use rubber stamps here adjustment grant, um, grant messages explaining a human error this message, email message, grants the action requested in the claim of a customer who received a leather computer case. There was monogram incorrectly. The writer, uh, writer has no excuse for human error was to blame. His explanation is positive and convincing. Your October, so you must make the reference in, you know, uh, writing reply. When you will write the reply to any previous letter, you must put the reference point. Usually RE. Reference is used in everywhere. So your October 1 inquiry concerning order number A4170. 
So identifies the claim and transaction. It is the identification message. And then you are using the adjustment grounds, so direct approach. Your leather computer case monogram with an old English B should reach you in a day or two. It is our evidence to you that our sensory old record of, for satisfaction is as genuine as the leather itself. So relates action to reader concern and direct approach good news you are beginning with. Because your satisfaction is a top priority, we looked into the uh, cause of this rare incident, it turned out to be a simple uh, cause of human oversight. Two people read and check the order and two people overlook the English, old English monogram. It's the problem. It is the problem. Specifications. Such things do happen despite our uh, best efforts when they do we are glad to send you a replacement. So you are giving replacement. Are, this is the explanation ultimately. Like our customers, we will settle for nothing less than the highest quality. Uh, frank and convincing explanation, good persuasion technique. You are making a persuasion here. And finally, you are, you are finishing with goodwill space. We know that uh, your leather computer case will give you uh, many years of beautiful service. That means the product will be a very good one. So although there is a problem, problem, but you are adjust, uh, you are you are providing adjustment grounds and you are using the direct approach. Ultimately, what we are learning, we are learning when you you are going to use direct approach or direct order in writing business message. You can use direct approach in inquiries for favorable, favorable reply and adjustment grants. You can, you can also use direct approach for order acknowledgement. Order acknowledgement. Order acknowledgement means you have received order, you are just acknowledging. There is order acknowledgement. Now we have got your MacBook in proper condition. So you are writing and you will use the direct order. Order acknowledgement are sent to let people know the status of your of their order. Begin with a direct order. Let the reader know that know what they are asking about or what they are sending to you continue with providing information if appropriate then achieve a secondary goal selling tactics you can use this type of tactics for um, other products the product you have received and now more products are available more products are available you can incorporate such type of technique close with goodwill and thanking for the products say for an example here is a later direct approach acknowledgement by, by noon tomorrow, your three new Buskin motors and one Dowson 110 compressor should reach you uh, Meadowbrook shops. As you requested, we mark them for your west side loading dock and send them by, you know, Warren Motor Express. So you are sending the goods, the product uh, acknowledging. This this acknowledgement here means that the you are you made inquiries and they are acknowledging that yes, product is ready, product is available. That type of acknowledgement. So directly tell about goods being sent. So you are telling about the goods that are being sent. Positive emphasis on delivery. So by send them by Warren Motor Express so that we can be certain of sending you the one handcraft for your special uses. Will you please review the enclosed description of the two models available? So you are promoting negative information, uh, information presented with you viewpoint em emphasis. Help explanation is reader in making choice. That means you are also uh, giving some 
special tips to buy some other product. Will you please review the enclosed description of the two models available? As you will see, the model M is our heavy duty. Design by its extra weight is not justified for all jobs. When you have made your choice, please mark it on the enclosed card and mail the same to us. We will send you your right choice away. So you are also trying to sell more products. Your uh your your three dozen three seventeen T clams should reach you by the thirteen. As you may know, this uh, very popular clumps have been in short supply for the for some time now, but we have been promised a, a limited order by the 11th. We are making three dozens for rush shipment to you. So tactful emphasis on receipt of, uh, receipt of goods. We are always pleased to do business with uh, Fletcher Machine Works and we'll continue to serve you. So this is the um, uh, company who ultimately made the inquiry. We'll continue to serve you with quality industrial equipment, friendly, fraud, look. So in, in case of acknowledgement, what I'm trying to do, the, although the example is a little bit complicated, complicated, but for you, Acknowledgement means that when you receive the good, you will you can write the direct order. Yes, we have received the goods. The goods are in good condition. Good condition. This is acknowledgement. Uh, acknowledgement. Oh, here the acknowledgement with the problem. Sorry, I haven't looked into it. There is a problem. Some problematic issues you are also addressing. Addressing. You are you are sending back this info, this product. So you can also, when you are also writing or acknowledging with a problem, you can use direct order, but here you have to be positive in writing the problem issues, problematic issues. And claim letters, for claim letters, you can also use the direct approach. For claim letters, you can also use the direct approach for claiming something. The product is not good, now you are claiming. L L Mr. Luther Ferguson, President, RIS Carpet Incorporated. Dear Mr. Ferguson, subject color fading of your uh, quota of carpeting, your invoice 3147 dated January. So you are making a reference of the product that is not good. That means the product is not good. You have bought a product. The product is not good. Now you are claiming. For claim letters, you are also using direct approach, direct statement of the problem. Direct statement of the problem. The quota top carpeting you installed for us last January has faded badly as uh, and is an uh, eyesore in our hotel pool area. So this is the problem you are stating the problem. For, for, for who is your writing the claim letter? Later and then, as you can see in the enclosed uh, photograph, the original forest green color now is spotted with uh, rings of varying shades. So you are uh, you are now explaining the problem, explain nature and the extent of defect, defect of varying shades of white and green. The spotting is uh, especially heavy in areas adjacent to the pool. Uh, probably water has caused the damage, but your written warranty says uh, that the color will withstand the effects of sun and water. So emphasis uh, case firmly. So you are you are giving uh, you, you the points or establishing the points that were written in the order while you are making claim. Because the product clearly has not lived up to the warranty, so warranty period has also not expired. We ask that uh, you replace the quota top with a more suitable carpeting. If you are unable to find a satisfactory carpeting, we request a refund of the full uh, purchase price, including installation. So you, what is your claim you are explaining here? I will appreciate your 
a usual uh, promptness in correcting this problem. So you're also using guru statement with, uh, you know, differing or individual approach, not as the rubber stamp. So you can, you can also use this type of claim letters in direct order because it is your claim. When you are claiming for the bad product, you can also use the direct approach. Also in operational message, you can use direct approach. The internal communications needed in a company's work usually send between employees can range from, uh, you know, casual to highly formal. The of, it can be, it can range from casual to highly formal. Casual means when you are sending message to your same level, is, you can use the casual and moderately formal when you are sending letter to your seniors, juniors, etc. And highly formal, highly formal means that when the information about the policy and processors of the company, that is known as highly formal. So in your in your in your operational messages, you can use you can use direct approach when it is positive news and indirect approach when it is negative news. And the direct approach can also be different types. It, it may be casual, uh, casually direct, moderately formal, and highly formal approach. Casual, say for example, quick responses to immediate uh, work needs. Quick response, usually in quick. Uh, a casual format, quick response. Send between peers, that means those who are same level employees. Moderately formal, more carefully constructed direct messages. The messages that are looked at in, in the chapter, ultimately the, all the messages here we discuss is about uh, for moderately formal. And for policy and principles issues, corporate cultural issues, this is a highly formal. Your, your your salary is going to deduct. Your uh, insurance premium is going to deduct early, etc. Et the po policy issues, this you must follow the high formal system of sending. And you know what is the formal system and what is the informal system. In our chapter one, we discuss about the formal network and informal network. Formal network means from managing director to deputy managing director to general manager. So the steps must follow. You cannot, the managing director cannot send any letter directly to the employees of the organization. The, the system will follow the hierarchy of the organization. This is known as a highly formal. And casual means Managing director is asking to you for something. This is casual. And moderately formal means maybe you are the lowest level employee. A mid, a top manager is sending to you without middle level, moderate level, operational messages. So in operational messages, usually if it is positive message, then you can use direct approach. Ultimately, what we have did today is about the direct messages. Um, discuss here and in operational mass organizing the direct order choose the appropriate tone casual moderate formal or informal be clear and uh, courteous order the information logically close in a way that builds goodwill here there is an example given for you um, this is the internal operational message the message is given to this this is also known as Memorandum. Can you remember? What is the memorandum? Sir, memorandum official kuno notice is it or no use correctly? Internal operational message, isn't it? Yes, sir. Internal? Yes. So here the the official internal or memorandum is used to circulate energy conservation uh, points or principles or policies to help uh, to help us keep cost low the following conservation measures are effective immediately uh, you know thermostats will be set set to maintain temperatures of 78 degrees uh, fahrenheit 
throughout the air conditioning season, air conditioners will be shut off in all buildings at 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. Air conditioners will be started as late as possible each morning so as to have the buildings at the appropriate temperatures uh, within 30 minutes after the start of the work day. Lighting levels will be reduced to appro approximately 50 to 60 foot uh, candles uh, in all work. So these are the internal policy issues to conserve the energy or to reduce the energy cost cost in addition we will uh, we will each of the each of you help in uh, conservation areas under your control especially i ask uh, that you do the following turn off lights not required in performing work keep windows closed when the cooling system is working turn off all computer monitors and printers at the at the end of the day I am confident that these measures will reduce our energy significantly. Your effort to follow them will be greatly appreciated. So beginning is direct and immediately identifies the problem. Direct and identifies the problem. Clear writing and listing results in good uh, readability. So you are um, um, bulleting, uh, bulleted points make a uh, good system of reading or increases readability. Separate listing of other measures gives uh, order and enhances understanding. So personal measures. So other than the central system, some personal measures you can take. These have been listed in separate listing. Closing personal remarks add to effectiveness. So I'm confident that, so this type of goodwill building message makes more effective. This will help the employee, um, uh, help, help achieve the objective of the system. So this is about operational messages. So if we sum up today's lecture about the direct messages, we can say that uh, in the business world, Two types of messages are written. One is positive, another is negative. And when you are neutral, message is also positive in our sense. Neutral, neutral and positive is categorized as same. So when you are writing positive messages, you can use direct approach. And direct approach means direct approach means you are going to write the main message in the beginning of the letter or email or the memo. It is known as direct approach. And indirect means that you are not writing the direct message, uh, uh, writing the, uh, you know, main objective of a letter in the beginning of the message. Rather, you will use some strategic buffer. That means you will uh, write something else. And then you will move to the news, negative news. It is known as the indirect approach. approach. And the direct approaches or the direct order is used in operational messages, in inquiry letters, in favorable responses, and um, to play, uh, you know, compensate the damages. You can write the direct messages, messages. And I am um, also thinking to begin a new chapter. A new chapter in chapter eight that, that, that is about uh, you know negative messages can i can i finish maybe this will not take a long time because we have already uh, have some idea to write the indirect messages what do you think hello dears Are you with me? Yeah, who is talking? Where is? I don't know. I didn't say anything. 
So if I think uh, who, who are present to this lecture, only five six ball, is it? All are absent today. Sir, can shall we all give our individual presentation next Thursday? Right. No one can present today online. No, um, I'm thinking uh, to receive the presentation offline. Physical presentation. Okay, I'm... okay, okay, sir. So, um, should I continue one more chapter or? So if let's you don't... call it a day today. Can I add a foreign? Sorry? Sir, let's leave it here, sir. Let's continue. Okay, then uh, um, continue for uh, about, uh, you know, around 30 minutes. We can finish maybe by 30 minutes, within 30 minutes. Sir, how uh, are there quarter chapter package of final year? So everyone is suggesting to uh, end it today. Oh, really? In that case, chapters, how many chapters are left? Uh, chapter 8 about uh, writing negative messages, number 1. Number 2, we also look into the um, corporate uh, meetings, meeting, uh, meeting minutes writing. One more chapter. Uh, two chapters. Right. Uh, and in, there, there are some other chapters. If we have time, then we will extend the, uh, you know, syllabus. Syllabus. Yes, but... To extend the syllabus, we are already there. Y yes. Uh, so the no, syllabus no. is already overflowing for us, like eight chapters no. or six chapters on final. I don't think it is overflowing because uh, I, I said that this is very important for you, the chapter, although it seems sleep. So for example, you have to write grammatically correct sentences. It, it, it seems very sleep. But this is very, 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 very important in your professional life. If you write a single sentence that is not uh, error free, the reputation of the company will go down and insignificant go down. So uh, although it seems uh, the, the issues are very simple, but very serious in your professional life. All right. Sir, can I ask a question yeah, regarding that? I'm the final yes, answer. yes. The floor is open for you. You can ask many questions, not only one. Sir, 